Welcome back. Now, after the second National People's Assembly in Johannesburg, the economic freedom fighters have a new leadership in place, save for the positions of president and deputy, where both Julius Malema and Floyd Chibambu were re-elected respectively. Godric Gadi was replaced by Marshal Dlamini as the party secretary general. Now, building up to the conference, there were allegations of differences within the party's top leadership. And while the EFF refuted this, uh, some of the election outcomes were close to what was being predicted. Uh, Umpile Matwe, uh, Mawatwe, who is the new EFF uh, Treasurer General, joins us now to talk about uh, the conference and what came out of it. Thanks so much and congratulations. Thank you and good morning to the viewers at home. Umpile, you are the new Treasurer General uh, in this position that you've been elected to. Uh, what do you hope to bring to that position? Look, um, the treasurer position is a very critical position because it is basically the back office support to the operations, which is your secretary's uh, office and the presidency. We, we, I'm saying the back office because we offer back office support. So when there's programs, when there's um, um, assemblies, when there's um, rallies, marches and anything, we should be there to provide the financial support mainly. Uh, but not only that, but also the support to the Secretariat uh, Office in terms of planning, in terms of logistics. Like right now, we were involved mainly in the transport logistics uh, for the Assembly. So, yeah, it's a very interesting uh, office, but we, we are ready. We, we've, we've, we're ready to, to hit the ground running. Mm, what does the money situation look like? Because we know in politics you actually do need the financial muscle uh, to get through all the work that needs to be done. Of course. Uh, we, we are very conscious of where we get our money from. We are being funded by our own members. So you know the party levies, uh, councillors, MPLs and MPs, we contribute to the organisation. And of course we reach out to those people who are sympathetic to the EFF and who subscribe to the uh, movement. So we, we, we will not be taking money from any Rupert or Oppenheimer. We are very clear about that because we believe that they got where they are through uh, illegal uh, means and criminal um, activities. So we will not be associating with people as, as such. But we are calling on all business people to come on board to contribute to the revolution, uh, to the democracy of the country. Uh, we are strengthening the, the, the democracy in the country. If it wasn't for the EFF, I don't think the country would be where it is, it is today. People might uh, disagree with me, but I mean, if they sit back and, and, and reflect, they need to be truthful to themselves and say, if it wasn't for the EFF, things would have gone worse. Mm. It's a very interesting statement that you make about funders, you know, calling uh, uh, people thieves, uh, whereas the EFF has also been linked with uh, some less than savoury characters, I would say, in terms of friendships and funding. Um, uh, one that comes to mind is Adriano Mazzotti, of whom quite a lot has been said and written. So, you know, in those terms, when you say you will not take money from criminals, using your words, I mean, uh, uh, how far does that stretch? How do you define who is a criminal and who isn't? So, Mazzotti has not been found guilty by the court of law. Mazzotti, Mazzotti, well, Rupert, we know how he came into the country and how, where he got his wealth from. We, 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 it's, it's through, we can't compare Mazzotti with Rupert. You and and I'm saying it's dangerous to, 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 yeah, to, to sit saying, here and call people criminals. Yeah, because but I'm saying with, with Mazzotti, it's somebody who has written something about Mazzotti. It's like any journalist can just write something about somebody and therefore we must just say uh, it's true. It must be tested. It must be proven. If Mazzotti, if Mazzotti is a criminal, he must go to court and face the court of law and, and be declared a criminal. And the issue of Mazzotti really, it came in at a time where it was just the, the beginning of the EFF. We were caught by surprise that we need to pay money to actually contest the, 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 the elections. And at that time, you'll, be, you, you'll, be, um, you'll agree with me that a lot of people were not associating with the EFF. So we had nobody else but to go to Mazzotti. We, we, we tried to fundraise, uh, but it was a lot of money, and uh, we were not prepared for that. Is and he Mazzotti still funding came. the EFF? Come again? Is he still funding I'm the EFF? I'm not sure. I'm new in this position, so I'm not sure. Maybe the previous TG would... 
be able to answer that question properly. Okay, uh, let's talk to uh, some of what happened over the weekend at, at, at the conference. And uh, in terms of gender parity, uh, you know, that was one of the things that came out. If you look at the new leadership structure of the EFF, three men, three women. Is that something that, was, uh, uh, that happened by design or, you know, was it by default? Or is this a, a project that the EFF is consciously pushing? So firstly, the top six is not a structure. I want us to be clear on that. The top six alone is not a structure. There's a structure called the CCT, which is the Central Command Team, which comprises of 40 additional members and six um, officials. Now, the EFF has always been uh, deliberate in terms of um, uh, gender uh, equity. Um, we've got a policy that says 50% women in parliament, in legislature, in, in, in councils, and even in our structures. When, so when the delegates decided really on the top six, I really can't talk whether it was a delivery design, but I'm, I'm very happy that it happened that way because we are showing the country, we are leading the country to show that women are more than capable. And even with the additionals, we've got 40 additionals. Of the 40, 22 is females. So we have a CCT structure that is uh, composed of now 62% female. That, that, that should be celebrated. It has never happened anyway. Not even in the ANC, which is more than 107 years old. We are only six years old. We are seeing 62% of female in the leadership role. And we are very proud. And we can only grow from here. And we are calling on all women in South Africa to come and join the only revolutionary party that speaks for women, uh, which is the EFF. So... People are questioning quite a bit of, you know, the character of the economic freedom fighters in terms of how it operates. Um, our question of the day this morning speaks to that whole situation with people dow bowing down before uh, Julius Malema, who's the party president and CIC. And he, of course, condemned it. But some are saying that, well, you know, this is the character of the organization where it does seem to be tyrannical. Uh, it does seem to be that, you know, there are very dominant leaders at the top and others just have to abide by that. And uh, they would say it is borne out by things like people not being allowed to speak out um, outside of the structures of the party. How do you respond to that? No, no, no. Obviously, speaking out of the structure of the party, who are you talking to? Because you've got issues within the structure, you must raise them in the structure. It's like being at home. So when you and your mother are having an argument, you don't go to the neighbor and talk about your mother with the neighbor. You start with your mother. If your mother, you still don't agree, you go to the uncle, but it remains within the family. So that's exactly what you are saying. We say, we speak to us here in the organization. Don't go out. Who are you talking to? Who do you want to impress? Who is the media? You did not join the media, you joined the EFF. And, and the issue of bowing really to the CIC, he condemned it. I also condemn it. And it's, it was not planned. It, it's just people who see CIC as a leader. He's a revolutionary. And we should really appreciate that in our lifetime, we've got a revolutionary who is always ahead of, of everybody. And it comes natural that people will look up to him yeah, because he is ahead of everyone. The CIC is, is, is one person that really you need to, if you were to sit with him one, uh, for an hour, I can tell you now, you'll be convinced that this is the leader that we, South Africa, should be having today. Is and he a tyrant? No, he's not. But he's firm. He's firm. He's firm, very firm. You have to be firm as a leader. He's very firm, but he's very engaging. You need to engage him and, and, and debate with him. He's open for debates. And if you lose the debate, he loses. And if he wins, he wins. But it's very firm, and you need a firm leadership. Where would we be today, the EFF, if the CSC was not firm? I mean, if you look at the dodgy characters that we had in the movement, where he took decisions and said, this is not going to happen. And today we look back and say, but the CSC was right. And why do we only see it later? It's because he's a revolutionary who is ahead of everybody at any given point. Let's talk to some policy positions. Now, uh, starting with the whole Pan-Africanist thread that uh, came through very strongly at this uh, assembly. So if you could perhaps just give us in a nutshell what the ultimate vision is uh, that the EFF has in this regard. We've always been advocating for um, Africa, for Africans, open borders, 
um, we are one. If it's doable in, 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 in the UK, uh, in America, why is it not doable here? These borders were imposed on us by colonizers. And they just, you know, it's so painful because where I come from at home, my home in the Northwest, um, literally 60 kilometers from the border of Botswana. And my great grandfather come from Botswana. So I have to, pre pre to present a passport for me to go and see my great, great, great father. That's sad. And we, we see each other as Botswana, as South Africa. It can't be they speak the same language as me. Zimbabwe, the Sona speaking people. So, so why must a border, a gate really divide us? If, if, if we were to stand together as Africa with all the mineral resources that we have, all the capabilities that we have, we can build a strong Africa. Um, um, we, we advocate for, uh, let's collaborate, let's cooperate as Africans. Let's not go beyond the borders of the continent to look for services that we can have internally. And that's what we are saying, to say, we don't need any other assistance. We have everything here. If I don't have a teaspoon, you've got a spoon, let's stay together as Africans mm -hmm. and let's close uh, the puzzle. So that's what we're advocating for, Africa for Africans, and uh, we can do it. It's doable. Going back to that notion of a United States of Africa that uh, Muammar Gaddafi espoused, that Absolutely. Kwame Nkrumah has espoused, Absolutely. and others, of course. Uh, but of course, the AFF acknowledges that uh, that's going to take time. It's not something that can happen overnight. It's going to take time, but we, we have to start. It doesn't mean that because it's going to take time, therefore we can start. We have already started. We are only six years old. But you can see that we, we've got presence in Namibia, in Zimbabwe, in Lesotho, in Botswana, in Liberia, in Ghana. We're spreading uh, our wings. And yesterday, in the closing remarks of the CIC, he said the former Secretary General, uh, Godrich Garti, is going to be championing the coordination of... Uh, the EFF within the continent. So we are consolidating. The message is out there. I've traveled the continent myself in my previous life, uh, not very long ago, by the way. And everywhere I go, I tell them I'm from South Africa. They said, where? Julius Malema, where? Is Even the French speaking, they listen, they watch our parliament and they listen to the CIC. So the message already is out there. It's really for, out, for us to reach out to those people because they are there. We know them. We've met them in the continent, where they are saying, we want EFF. Burkina Faso, they are saying the same thing. You go to Niger, you go to Nigeria, you go to Guinea, everywhere else in the continent that I have mm. personally been myself. Every time I go there, they even force me to take uh, clips, uh, videos of them saying, CSC, please come and rescue us. So yesterday, during one of your press briefings, um, I was in that press briefing, there was a question that was asked, and I missed the answer to that, and I want to ask it again, because the question was, what is the role of, where do white people fit into this notion of a pan-Africanist continent? Um, is there a role for white people? What do you mean by is there a role for white people? That was a question that was asked, as I said, yeah. and, and, and I didn't hear the answer to that, and I was quite curious, because one of the journalists there asked that specific question. What role will white people play? So white people are not going to be driven to the sea. White people, they've got a place uh, here, but all that you are saying is that we can't be colonized in a democratic country. We can't be colonized in a free country. So white people must, let's share, I mean, for example, the issue of the land, who owns the land? It's white people who are saying to them, let us share the land. We're not saying we're, we're taking everything and therefore go away, go back to Holland. That's not what we're saying. We're saying you do know that you came into the country, you did not bring the sea, you did not bring the ocean, you did not bring the mountains, you did not bring the land. Let us share. We can't, 25 years into democracy, we still have privately owned uh, national parks. National park. It can't be correct. So we're out of time. Where to from here for the EFF? We are going to the ground, as the CSC said yesterday. Uh, we will be consolidating our forces. Um, we are gearing up for 2021 uh, for decisive victory in Johannesburg Metro, in Tswane, in Nelson Mandela, in the Gurleni, in Rustenburg, and everywhere else in the, in the country. We have, we need to be, we will be having a program starting from next year. We'll obviously start with the plenum 
and will outline exactly what programs will be having in the year. But we are uh, really going back to our branches. We've got 90% uh, branches launched. We're going back to our branches uh, to um, get them up for the walk that is coming in 2021 for the wow. victory. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, to the EFF's new Treasurer General, Ompile Maotwe, for talking to us about the party's second National People's Assembly.